G'day. Today on the table, I'm having a look at a Lenovo Ideas Pad 11015 ACL. This one manufactured back in 2016. And what I'm going to do here is open it up and see what we can upgrade. So this one is running an AMD E1, which is an extremely gutless processor. And so far, all these screws are the same length, which I'm going to expect to be consistent throughout this whole disassembly. But yeah, the AMD E1, I'm pretty sure it's a single core or dual core processor, two thread processor that is extremely underwhelming for most tasks. So far, leave all the screws out. All the screws there are the same length. It doesn't actually have a DVD burner in there. <laughs> fake placeholder. Hidden under there is another three screws over here, which you will need to take out also. There go, those are out. Battery should be able to shift backwards. No, I don't think there's any other trick to it. Start trying to disassemble and see where we get to. So I'm just pulling up in this section over here. From there, I'll be able to separate it. There we go. And on the inside, we see not a lot. We have the option for a DVD burner over here, option for something else over here. A whole lot of dead space. One not simply removable battery but with the illusion of being removable. Two screws there holding it in. We have a wireless card here, keyboard, battery connection, fan connection, cool uh, processor, and we got RAM over here. So we'll disconnect the battery. So I'll zoom you guys in. Another thing, also repairable on this one if need be. Uh, no, my mistake. I was going to say the charger port, but no, the charger port is located right here, which required work on the main board to be able to do that. So I'm going to pull this back just slightly, wiggling it left to right, and we're out. And I want to see what RAM we've got in here. Did have the option on a higher spec board, probably to have a dedicated GPU here. Does not in this case. And we are running four gig of. Oops, sorry about the focus. 4 gig of DDR3 or DDR3 low voltage, which doesn't surprise me considering this is designed to be a very power efficient machine. And if we're going here to replace the hard drive, or to replace, I actually should cover that for you. To open up the RAM, or to get the RAM out, we pull these two to the left or outwards, and it flicks itself up. From there, you can just grab it and pull out nicely. Do note there is notch right here, right there, and that has to match up with the board. So you can only put it in one way. Okay. Keep going with the hard drive right here. Right, the hard drive here. I'm assuming this is gonna be a 500 gig Seagate drive. Just going by the little bit of branding I can see on it. So I'm taking out these four screws here. That's the access. And as you see, we have a Seagate 500 gig. And we'll have a build date somewhere around here. Uh, it's eluding me right now. June 2016. And what I'm going to do while I'm here is replace that to a solid state drive. Well, actually, I'm on the fence if it's actually worthwhile. So after a little bit of thinking, I don't think I will upgrade it to the SSD. I'm going to do a speed test on a hard drive. The E1, E1 7070-10 AMD in here is a 10 watt processor. So it's almost like an Intel Atom in power. So, the amount of power it's using, it's not going to be able to utilize an SSD anyway. So I'm probably going to just do a quick health check on this.
So the hard drive came back pretty average for its age. It run about 100 meg, which considering it's about a six year old hard drive, isn't too bad. So I'm gonna put this back together, reinstall windows and see the slow machine go. So this is almost one of those machines that should not have really existed. The overall waste of resources, material, is disappointing. This would have been about a, probably a 300 US dollar machine when it first came out, possibly even 200, as this would have sold for probably between, I would say about 400 to 500 Australian dollars at the time, which it's disappointing to pay for a laptop that is not overly operational. So these are the kind of machines that I don't like, is stuff that have really underpowered Celerons for no real gain. It doesn't have a big battery in this machine. As you can see, we just have a standard sized battery. If it had a massive battery in here to justify the low power usage or to counter the low power usage, if it was using bugger all power and it could last 12 hours on a single charge, this whole section here was filled as opposed to putting this in and putting this here. The other thing is, this doesn't have a simple plate that can just break off to actually stick on it. So if you did get a, a DVD burner to put in here, you'd have no, no end cap on it. So, disappointing all around. Uh, we'll just quickly lift up the fan to have a quick look and see what we're, if there's much dust build up. I'm not too concerned about the dust sitting on the fan. I'm more concerned about the dust that is connected to the cooler. And we are, no, we don't want to do the lift. So I won't worry about that in that in this instance. That's replacing the thermal paste on a 10 watt on a 10 watt processor is really not going to change much, as I don't think this thing will be thermal throttling. Here we go. We'll put this back in. Swivel it in slightly and click. We're in. And then need to put the shield or the side back on. Put the sand over first down, click, 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 and from there we're going to put the three screws back over here, one, two, and three, put that back in, and now it's just a matter of putting the remaining screws all back in. So all these screws look to be of the same length, so that is not a concern. So from here, I'm gonna put some screws in and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Ta-da!